We praise you, Jesus. We magnify you. We lift you up on high. Thank you, Father. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you again for another time in your presence. And we thank you for the answered prayers today. It is written, those who wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. So we thank you for the new our strength. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name. Lord, for the moment we have, let your word impact upon every of our lives. Let today be a day we shall live to remember. Let light come forth and shut every darkness. And thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have been trying to examine that very important subject of wisdom under the caption, What Wisdom Is This? That's unique, it's strange, but it's powerful, impactful, productive. It's proofs you cannot deny. May your experience all through this month become a fountain from where you keep drawing all your life. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. So every human problem, there is a wisdom solution. There is a wisdom solution to every situation of life. My people are gone into captivity because they don't know the right thing to do. Because they have no knowledge. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 13. My people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. The honorable men now look like prisoners because they have no knowledge. And the word says that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And from part of the things we've done, we see that um, wisdom is, simply put, applied knowledge. The correct application of knowledge, that's wisdom. You know what it is, and you know how it applies. So knowledge is the know what, and wisdom is the know how. Getting the best out of what you know. Because you know how it applies. That's wisdom. I'd like you to have this statement impressed on the tables of your heart. There is a wisdom solution to every situation of life. There is a wisdom solution to every situation of life. There is a wisdom solution to every situation of life. It's been my privilege and honor to be able to have people come around and ask questions. And some of the things they carry on their head as major issues, just some little light from heaven, dissolves their hair, and it's all over. Someone met me sometimes and uh, shared something with me, and I said, You don't have a problem. Get back to the man. I'm prostrate for him. It ended there. Just one thing. Could have been frustrated all his life just by one prostrate and then you are over. Between a lifetime frustration and one time frustration, which one is better? There is a wisdom solution to every situation of life. To every question. That is a wisdom answer. To every obstacle, that is a wisdom miracle. Just blow it up. It takes wisdom to fly. And it takes wisdom to stay up. It takes wisdom to take off. And it takes wisdom to stay up. 
1997, I was in South Africa, and then I was looking at a few things, but I do plenty of thinking. It's my career. So I, I do a lot of thinking. And I said, it's quite a feat to capture a baby lion. Isn't that a feat? It's a major feat. You have the whole village shouting your name. But it's a greater feat to watch it grow. Isn't it? Otherwise, you capture it before, it will capture you now. Capture a baby lion, you make news. But watch it grow. Uh, it takes more than what you needed to capture it to watch it grow and mature. It takes wisdom to take off, but it takes greater wisdom to stay off. I've also seen a lot of you that have gotten a lot of results and caused a lot of waves at one time or another, and suddenly it just fizz you out. But when Jesus came, he was growing in knowledge and growing in wisdom. So it's not a thing you say, we are finished. They don't finish. He was growing in knowledge. Look chapter 2 and verse 40. And the child grew in knowledge. He was strong in spirit and filled with wisdom. He was growing in knowledge, waxing stronger in the spirit and growing as it were in wisdom. So as results grow, wisdom must grow to keep it growing. So the course is not ending in February. Amen. What wisdom is this? It's a continuous course. As you grow in grace, you must grow in wisdom so that grace will not be converted to disgrace. As you grow in results, you must grow in resource, in depth. Otherwise, the results will crash. So Jesus was growing in knowledge, waxing strong in the spirit, and growing in wisdom. And the grace of God was upon him. So he was able to carry the grace of God continuously because he was growing in knowledge and growing in wisdom. It's better to be slow and sure and to be, than to be fast and fall. Isn't that better? There is a wisdom solution to every human situation. There is a wisdom answer to every question of man. Just like your body has to be kept together, so your mind has to be kept alive. Now, in James chapter 5 and verse 13 and 14, is any sick among you, I mean, they call upon the elders of the church, and they pray over you. And they say, if any man lacks wisdom, so when you are sick in insight, your insight is sick. You don't really know what to do. You are doing something, but it's not working. That means you don't know what to do. This is to ask you to call on elders of the church when you are sick, that you have done what you know to do and you are not healed. You better call others to help lay hands on you so you don't die. So it's a call on me when you lack wisdom. And how do I know I lack wisdom when I'm not getting the answer? Instead of checking the back of the Lacombe, how many remember Lacombe? And then do guru guru to the answer. <laughs> <laughs> so you and I don't really have problems we just lack adequate insight we don't really have problems we just lack what? adequate insight years ago I said there is no mountain anywhere every man's ignorance is his mountain now let me tell you what that means now somebody is a teacher in the primary school he has built a house hmm? Another one is an executive in an oil company. He has no plot. Hello. You know the difference? Wisdom. 
The value you derive from your resources is a function of wisdom. What you have is not as but as how best you handle what you have in getting what you desire. There's a lot of difference. Most of our forefathers never went to school. They never knew the meaning of earning salaries. And they didn't give back to us on the trees. They had houses. Because they had wisdom. Is that through wisdom? It's a house built, not through wealth. Through wisdom. Through what? I said something in Kaduna many years ago. One man who came to our church for the first time, he, he, he belongs to another you know, Pentecostal church. When he had me announced that by next Sunday there will be roof on your head, ah! he said, This man can lie. <laughs> what method will ever be used under heaven to make roof come upon people's head between this Sunday and next Sunday? This crowd of people. So the following Sunday was coming to see the lie. By the time he came, behold, there was roof everywhere. <laughs> now, I didn't tell you what kind of roof. I said, by this coming Sunday, there will be roof. So, roof has many forms. And whatever is the roof must be the roof. Now, listen. We built a church with less than 30,000 naira. With the northern mat we call Zana. Tied it with rope, and everybody sat under that holy assembly without any scorching heat having access. All was done in a week. There is a vow not to borrow, so there must be the week to put what you have to work to get the result you desire. We are combating the sun, we are not combating the rain. So all we need is a shed, just like you have the the canopy of a tree giving you a shield against rain. We can use the mat to get that result. And we did. And now from Grass Cathedral, look at the cathedral that came out. So if you can think enough, what you have is enough. Why are you pricing things you don't have any means to buy? To put yourself under more pressure so your blood pressure can rise. That's the reason. You don't have money for one bedroom. You are pricing three bedroom house. They say, how much? They say, 250. You say, what of 200? Now, you don't have 40. And I say, no, it won't take 200. You say, what of 220? <laughs> I mean, just like somebody in a show, on a drama stage. You don't need that. I've never prayed over house rent in my life. I don't rent any houses that need a prayer. The houses I had ever rented, they are prayerless houses. They don't need prayer to pay. I never sent children to school that needed prayer to pay fees. My children go to the school that don't need prayer for payment. Amen. Because the pressures you put on your life, they choke your capacity to reason. And so keep you at the same spot. One of us came to me years ago in Kaduna and he said, he needed me for me to pray for him. He needed a job. I said, that car outside, whose car is this? It's my car. I said, that's a job. I said, put this car at Kano Garage and say you are going to Kano. Put on your tie. They will like you. Somebody with a tie and coat and has this car I'm going to Kano, we take his own car. So he went to Kano following day, he came back with a smile. <laughs> he said, It works. <laughs> I said, How? He made 3,000. Then. Huh? And he had returned by 2 p.m. He was inside a job looking for a job. Can you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> we don't really have problems, we only lack adequate insight. There are untold opportunities all around you where you are standing. An Indian man says something and then it's very insulting. But I think it's provoking. It's provocative too. He said, Nigeria is so rich that you can almost pick Naira on the road. But Nigerians are so blind, they cannot see it. What an insult that is. 
from my Indian brothers. Opportunities unlimited. But here are people suffering lack and want unlimited in the face of unlimited opportunity. What a paradox. The Bible said wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom and with all your gettings, because that's what gives value to any other thing. With all your gettings, a good job is not equal to a good life. With all your gettings, get good understanding. With all your gettings, great qualifications. With all your gettings, get a good understanding. With all your gettings, great inheritance from your fathers. It will blow up one day. And then, eh, where is it? Where? Where? It has gone. It is wisdom that gives value to every other virtue of life. Wisdom. 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 You know, you can pray to death. Prayer. If you don't pray with wisdom, you can pray until you die. There is a writer I used to read, and he prayed and prayed until it's long. And I said, what's a prayer? They should get answers in prayer. He got problems from prayer. Because he wasn't praying with wisdom. Amen. How much you sigh <clears throat> is not part of the factors for answered prayer. We used to have a chap in our church in Kaduna. Anytime he's praying, we'd be beating his heart like this. I said, hey, wait, wait. <laughs> I mean, read it. <laughs> Stop. Do you have a spare heart? <laughs> Don't rupture this one. Now, that's not part of the requirements for answered prayers. If you ask anything according to my will, I hear you. And if I hear you, then you know you have received my petitions of me. Not if you hit yourself. And then you put your head between your knees. The posture is irrelevant. The temperature of your groaning is not the issue. You know, what the judges look at in court are the facts you are presenting. And when you go before the throne, you have gone before the judge of all the earth. So what you need are your facts. What do you need? Can you imagine a lawyer get to the judge? My God! <laughs> the court security will pick him up because there's no point. This man is a dangerous man. Let's get him out. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> there is nothing mystical about Christianity. Christianity is a practical faith. And it brings you into a practical relationship with God. So why don't you take advantage of that? Instead of, you know, practicing mysticism. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Can I read one scripture? Are you still okay? Okay, Philippians, I mean, Proverbs chapter 3. One of the greatest problems that we are confronted with in this part of the world is a problem of lack. And I'm sure in the course of this month, God will be addressing that extensively. Now, Proverbs chapter 3. Watch out for every event all through this year. Whether in prayers or in praise, God is committed to your flight. Amen. So just watch out for one knob, more knob you need to press, one more button you need to press to enhance your flight. And then you'll be there. Now chapter 3 of Proverbs and verse 13. It says here, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding, for the merchandise of it is great, better than the merchandise of silver, and again they are of thou fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things that thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Now verse 16, length of days, where? It's in our right hand, and in our left hand, what is it? Riches and honor. In our left hand, riches and honor. 
That means this wisdom is the custodian of wealth. Custodian of what? In our left hand, riches and honor. If you look at Psalm 112 and verse 5, he will guide his affairs with discretion. So this word that we read about in that Psalm 112, verse 1 to 3, praise the Lord, blessed is the man that feared the Lord, and great delights himself in his commandment. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, the generation of the upright shall be blessed. His seed shall also be mighty upon the earth. Now, he said that man is a man of discretion. He engages divine discretion in handling his material resources. So, wealth and riches shall be in his house. His generation shall be blessed. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. And his righteousness endured forever. He, he won't need to go their way to make the most of his life. He won't join them in their approach and their strategy. Yet, you can't deny his results. His righteousness endured forever. He won't play the Nigerian game in his business. Yet, he will stand out for all to see. His righteousness endured forever. Discretion. Wisdom. Now, how do you look at it? God, the only wise God, God of whom he said, Oh, the depth, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable his ways and his past are past finding out. Romans 11 33. God, the wisest, or the only wise, the one whose wisdom is incomparable. That's why they call him the only wise God. He's not wiser, he's not wisest, he's wiser than the wisest. So they call him the only wise God. He is the commander of the wealth of the universe. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world, and all that dwell therein. If I were hungry, would I have asked you the thousand rams upon the thousand hills they are mine? The glory of this little house shall be greater than the former, the silver and the gold to make it so, they are mine. Now, now can't you see the relationship between wisdom and wealth? God, the only wise God, is the one also whose wealth is incomparable. So you can't call him the wealthiest. The only wealthy God. So God, the only wise, is also the only wealthy. That's the, the correlation between wisdom and wealth. Now, let's come down to the human realm and look at Solomon. Solomon was endowed with divine wisdom, isn't it? And God gave him wisdom and lightness of heart, more than the sun as by the seashore. You know all of that. And then there is nothing to compare the wealth of Solomon with. <laughs> that shows you that wisdom is the custodian of wealth. And let's come down to the realm in which we live. We saw Jesus in that parable. He gave a pound each to all his ten servants in that parable in Luke chapter 19. And he said, occupy it when I come. And then uh, one of them went forth and brought back ten from one. Another one went and brought back two. Now, at the same time, they were given these talents under the same market forces. One generated 100%. The other one, 20%. And some other, zero. You know, we are told there only about three of them. The other one ran away. <laughs> they have squandered. <laughs> they ran, <are>, you know. <laughs> They ran away. They blew it up. What is the difference between the one that made ten and the one that made two? Wisdom. Nothing else. He knew where best to invest that money. As at that point in time, that would give him maximum returns. The other one just said, anything goes. Are they selling bread? Yeah, let's buy bread. Out of firewood, let's buy firewood. This other one has some dimension of discretion to his own approach. 
Study the situation now that there is power, epilepsy all around. Who fire would be a good deal around here? Went out to find out how much they are selling. Went to the source to find out how much they are buying. And then discovered that he could always make about 80 to 120 percent. And then he goes about the marketing strategy to let them know there is fresh firewood here. It's natural thing, bio, bio energy. You don't need to consume much of carbon monoxide to give you everything you need. And then he sells off his firewood. And between 80 and 120 percent, was making that and making that. And by the time it was to make the turn, he had 100 percent things to the turn. After all his overhead. Some level of discretion. That's why I said, at every point in time, when you desire the best of results, ask me. The month of February is winding up, but the school of wisdom continues. You have captured some baby lions here now. And now you have to watch how it grows. So it does not capture you on the other side. You have to watch how it grows by putting yourself constantly in that school of wisdom as you sit at his feet from time to time, seeking the best way forward, not just the way forward, the best way forward. The best way forward for maximum yield, maximum results, maximum effect. I conclude by saying there is a wisdom solution to every human situation. There is an appropriate wisdom prescription for every human condition. There is a wisdom answer to every bugging question. And God has that answer to all questions, has that solution to all such situations, and he has appropriate prescriptions for all such conditions. So why don't we go back to him? Why don't we get back to him and ask? So the month of answers continues. All through this year, there shall be no question without an answer for you. Concerning your body in terms of health, you are receiving your answer. Concerning your job, your career, in terms of the required progress, you are getting an answer. Whatever appears like a bugging question in your life, this is the year of answers for you. They have been bothered and have gone all the things they needed to do for 400 years. But suddenly the eagle landed. Amen. Then I bear you on the eagle's wing and brought you out of Egypt unto myself. <laughs> that same eagle that brought them out of their 400, no answer, no solution, no successful prescription, is bringing you out this year. So we are not the, the cause of divine wisdom is not ending in February. It's a continuous requirement for all your lifetime. Continuous requirement for all my lifetime. I mean, can't get out of it. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, don't let the month of February pass without definite answers to certain issues that has to do with our operation. And it's been helping. Light has been booming from heaven. Because I take every month as serious as I take my bad day. I know for every month God has specific fruits available to me. So I'm not following it religiously. And the kind of light I've walked in in the month of February, I'd never known it before. He said to me recently, he said, every time you are troubled, check out on the book of records. You will find what is missing. Every time there's a need, he said, check in the house. There's an answer. And, and what a light that has been in my appraisal of a lot of things and how to move forward, how to go forward, that's the problem with success is this. You are either expanding it or you are losing it. 
when you throw anything up, <laughs> is it either going up or it's coming down? It can't stay mid-air. Paul said, one thing I do, I press. If you are not pressing, you drop. I told our men, sometimes you had a pastor's summit, and I said to them, I said, we are not here to be more failure, we are here to expand success. So all through the month, I'm not talking to poor people, I'm talking to wealthy people who have potential to be wealthier. I'm not talking to, I, I've not been talking to unwise people, I've been talking to wise people who have everything to be wiser. That's what they're doing. Abraham Lincoln said, I don't think much of a man who is not wiser today than he was yesterday. So the job is to stay wiser and to keep growing wiser by the day. He said, I don't think much of a man who is not wiser today than he was yesterday. So, and the Bible said the part of a just man is a shining light and it shines more. And wisdom is the face of a man wise man to shine. That means our part of wisdom is to be growing more and more and more unto the perfect day. So we are not saying that anyone here is not wise. No. In fact, how can you be born of the only wise God and not be wise? But are you growing in wisdom? That's my challenge. Tell me where you were two years ago and said I'm wise. No. You are dewising. Amen. You know what it means to dewise? But from your experiences all through this month, I mean... Anyone looking for you, we have to look up. Because you are going to stay up and going higher and higher by the day. If that is to let me hear your loudest amen. A wise man shall hear and increase in learning, increase in wisdom. And Jesus said, I can of myself do nothing as I hear. So, Jesus Christ was constantly hearing, so he was constantly growing in wisdom. Please don't be tired of hearing. Where you are going is still farther than where you are right now. Amen. A number of us are perhaps some 500 meters above sea level, and God has 40,000 meters above sea level for you, so where are you? You are not there yet. You are still flying too low. You are still flying too low. You are still flying too low. But thank God for the year on the eagle's wings, uh, every devil will know you have left the level you used to fly. Can I hear your amen? Thank you, Jesus. You know, in aviation, the higher you fly, the more stable the plane. Because you are leaving the cloud behind and then you are moving gradually into space where you are just on your own. So the higher altitude you scale, the more stable the flight. And the lower it is, the more troublesome. Because all the clouds are nearer the ground. I see you moving above the clouds yeah. into that stable realm yeah. where you are cruising with dignity. Yeah. Right to your feet if you are there. Lift up your two hands and celebrate God right there where you are. Celebrate Him. Celebrate Jesus. If you needed to grow in wisdom, Jesus, how much more do I need that? I need it. I need that. Every day challenge. In Jesus' precious name. You know what the word says? Wisdom has built a house. She has winged out her seven pillars. And he said wisdom is better than strength. Wisdom is better than weapons of war. But one sinner destroyed much good. Now you have a building of this nature. It doesn't take more than one liter of petrol to destroy it, does it? Lord, keep me from destroying what your grace has built in my life. Lord, keep me. Let your wisdom preserve me. Go ahead and pray that prayer over your life. One error can bring any man into horror. Oh Lord, deliver me from error that can bring my life into horror. Oh Lord, 
Glory to God. We praise you, Jesus. Deliver me from any error that can bring my life into horror. Give me, Lord, the meekness to keep aspiring to grow in your wisdom. Help me, Lord, to ask the appropriate question at every point in my life. Lord, don't leave me to myself. Help me out. I need you every hour. I need you, Lord, every hour. Zeo le poke seglia. Ye shegleria le barande sakano. Mazezo plekredia. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we pray.